In the Northern Hemisphere, there is a nation-state called Sweden, and this includes the island of Gotland, on which there is a town called Visby. You see here its medieval walls. When they are not busy having pandemics or wars, every normal August there is Sweden's greatest medieval festival, and I have been there. Twice. I arrived by ferry and immediately saw the old town in all its medievalness. There are parades, theatrical shows, lectures, a large market and medieval themed everything. There is a fine museum there too, which one day I may show you around. Very good canteen. Let's see what's on sale in the market. Okay, that is 70. Yes, but you also need that. Beads, glass, bone, metal, beads. There is a lot that can be done with birch bark and in Scandinavia they had a lot of birch to work with. These are ladles, in case you're wondering. And here is a trumpet. What is this stick, do you think? It's uh, it, oh, oh, yeah, it's a broom. Okay, no great surprise there, but, but oh, wait! These look like mystic staffs of power. Here we see some rather fine glassware, simultaneously hideous and impressive. Neither my budget nor my rucksack space extended this far, mind. Oh dear, that is not authentic. He's wearing it back to front. Folding authenti chairs. Basketwork backpacks seem to predate the cloth ones we're used to today. Oh, and don't leave without a cannon! Only 26,000 kroner. That's over 2,200 quid. Roll up, roll up, and place your bets, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Furs, oh yes, plenty of those. Which way will the mouse go? <laughs> we have a winner. Every year there seems to be a fashion and this was the year of the straw hat. I nearly got one but went instead for felt, cheaper and easier to stuff into luggage. Some people recognised me and these days the thing to do is ask nicely for a selfie. So I did. My goodness, my hair is spectacularly awful today. Well, still, it's a trademark. So the technical term for this is twirling. Fire twirling, yes. Fire twirling. Well, without the fire. fire. That was just practice. This is the safety version. <laughs> yes. It's all right. It's dead. Very sunny. Is that hat any good for, for sunburn or, or, yeah, or shading no, you? No, it's, it's for, for this, yes. Oh. It, it's very nice. So... That's, that's where they, why they had pointy hats, basically, <laughs> to cover, cover the hair like that. Of course! It's very good. At least I hope it's dead. Quick, look normal! Mm, dead. Authenti boots. More authenti boots. I'm yet to be tempted to buy a boar skin. The hairs are very uncomfortably bristly and coarse which limits its use a lot. Ah, now that deer skin is a much nicer thing. Ah, authentic oh no, no, inauthentic boots. Musical instruments, tempting. Some had plastic modern reeds, it's a compromise. Oh, wow, but... <laughs> to play something? Of course! Yes, <laughs> so when uh, when was this designed? About uh, 1500s. 1500s? Yes. Right. Um, do you know what it's called? Uh, it's called a nickel harpa. Nickel harpa. So in English it's uh, a key harp. A key harp. So we have three layers of keys here and they all have a slightly different function. So first one goes for the first ring. Yep. And the second, the yep. second string. The second string, so the middle peg moves. Yeah. And for the four, uh, third, the bottom one moves the end peg only. 
Yeah. But you can only bow one string at a time. Yeah, you can go for you can you can actually go with both. Both. But I'm not that skilled yet. <laughs> All right. So let's start here. Go up to the next one. All right. Third and fourth. So there are only actually four strings that you can bow, yeah. and the rest are just vibrating in sympathy for harmonics. Yes. Thank you very much, Indita. Yeah, no problem. You're welcome. Much more precise. Very nice. I particularly like the use of the Darth Vader theme towards the end there. <laughs> exactly. Very important. The triple beige flag. Mmm, beige. They're setting up here at the market at Visby for another day's trading. And who better to talk to about how things are run here than the organizer, the chief organizer of the whole kit and caboodle. Yes, it's Björn Sundberg himself. Hello there. Hello. So to please uh, give us some idea of the, the grand scale of, of operations here. How many market stalls do you have, for instance? Um, we have uh, 170 market stalls, and uh, roughly 170, mm -hmm. and uh, about 40,000 visitors over eight days, uh, 530 events during the week, and... Uh, a shitload of people doing stuff. That many? Yeah, that wow. many. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for being so scientific. <laughs> yeah. So how does this compare? Is, it, is this the biggest medieval festival on earth? Uh, well, uh, there are some other medieval festivals that uh, would be considered bigger. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, definitely the biggest one in Sweden and uh, arguably the biggest in Scandinavia and uh, we like to say biggest in Northern Europe. <laughs> right. But uh, we have those Germans uh, who uh, always make things in a grander scale. Oh, all right. <laughs> Uh, and I, I know that some of the what the Americans call Renaissance fairs, they, yeah. they, they get pretty big too. They get definitely pretty big. Um, since we're on a sort of uh, desolate island in the middle of the Baltic Sea... It's um, not desolate, it's not, it's, it's, it's not desolate know. at all. <laughs> no. But still, uh, if you compare this region to a uh, region, say, in the Central uh, Europe, you have mm -hmm. a huge number of people uh, having an easy time traveling in back and forth. Uh, this right. is an island, you have to travel here. Um, so that that's puts a different uh, scale to operations. But doesn't uh, that also contribute to the specialness of, of it? Absolutely, you are absolutely. In this we love this island and uh, we think it's the absolute perfect setting for uh, for this medieval festival. And, uh, and the town of Visby is uh, obviously um, a good setting with the uh, ring wall and uh, mm. also the the buffered zone uh, to the modern uh, modern buildings outside of the city, uh, which makes it uh, ideal to actually witness not only the inside of the uh, old town, but mm -hmm. also seeing the old town and the ring wall from from a small distance, and also getting to use that environment with medieval camps and stuff. So we love uh, we love this setting. It's it's brilliant. It, it's difficult to think of a better one. Uh, so, but what else makes Visby so particularly special? Why do people, for instance, come here year after year after year? You seem to have an amazingly loyal. Uh, customer base. For instance, uh, every year they, they, they sell a badge uh, that, that, that represents that year's uh, festival and you see people everywhere with the badges from loads of previous years yep. worn very proudly. Absolutely, we have uh, an amazing crowd uh, that uh, keeps coming back year after year mm -hmm. and um, it's actually, we, we calculated this and uh, we know that there's an 80% chance if you come here once that you'll come back and uh, right. the average visitor uh, coming here has been here 4.22 times before so it's, um, so yeah. They're loyal and uh, we love that. Very, <laughs> yes, 4.22, that is impressive. Yeah. And um, they're from all around Scandinavia and Germany and, and those parts, are they? Yes, uh, we have a vast majority of visitors from Sweden. And, all right. Uh, I, last time we calculated, we actually had 92% uh, of the visitors came from Sweden and uh, then it was divided upon the uh, rest of uh, the world. Where are we now? Uh, we're in Gantanas camp, uh, uh -huh. which is a, a group, an organization here, right. um, that works with the medieval week. So it started up as a camp for those who did night guard duty at the market. And oh, right. uh, they wanted to stay close, of course, so mm -hmm. that they wouldn't have to walk that very far. Yep. Uh, and uh, then it has grown. So it's a sort of small exhibition camp. You, um, we have craftsmen and mm -hmm. uh, a few traders and um, uh, people trying to show medieval life uh, in right. quite a small scale, uh, uh -huh. very cozy. 
It is. I would say that one of the things uh, for me that makes uh, Visby more special than many other reenactment style events is that uh, usually when you go to a reenactment event, uh, almost everyone's dressed as a soldier. Yeah. Uh, whereas here, almost everyone is dressed as a carpenter, a cook, a baker, a, you know, an ordinary person living an ordinary life. And you have women uh, and old people and children and so forth. It's not just men in their prime wearing armor. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point and something we're very happy about to see. Uh, the wide scale of people and uh, also the wide scale of, um, uh, how would you say, um, not seriousness, but mm -hmm. uh, knowledge and, and interest in the reenactment uh, sphere. I mean, we have people uh, that basically just put a cloth bag over their head and a rope right. around their waist and uh, walk around uh, wearing, uh, wearing a six pack of beer and uh, enjoying the first medieval experience. And hopefully they'll come back and get interested in what is lying behind here and uh, mm -hmm. being inspired. And also, I mean, there's, hopefully there's a role model for everyone here. Uh, we have the knights, definitely. We have the mm -hmm. soldiers, mm -hmm. uh, but also um, quite a big focus on, on crafts and uh, mm -hmm. trying to, to spread that knowledge. And uh, well, I'm happy that you say it, and uh, mm -hmm. we're actively trying to uh, to keep that going. So, so how do you foster this atmosphere that we want everyone to be in kit, but you don't yeah. have to have the very best kit to take part? Well, uh, by being inclusive, um, mm -hmm. if you um, we're trying to uh, to actually work with inspiring, not criticizing. So, right. um, but obviously, there's a lot of people going on. We can't control everyone. But if we make a, a good atmosphere going on Oops. here, yep. uh, I think that we could spread that uh, spread that idea as mm. far as we can. Especially when we're working with the uh, uh, with the reenactment groups that have very high standards, like Battle of Eastby. Um, right. And uh, they're very conscious of their role and uh, they are strict. You cannot get in there if you have the wrong shoes. You cannot get in there oh. if you have the non-riveted chainmail, uh, for example. So, yeah. uh, but uh, still, um, they are there to inspire and show that this is a way you could do it, mm -hmm. uh, but not criticizing others who are doing it a different way. So, uh, right. and, and they're conscious, and we're trying to spread that, that idea. Uh, across the entire festival. Well, you seem to have succeeded because the streets are, are full of people in all manner of kit, but yeah. it's reasonably high and reasonably consistent as well, yeah. so that yeah. uh, when you walk around town, you do sometimes get the feeling that you, uh, you're in a, a proper medieval world. Yeah. And, and we're, uh, we're happy to see that uh, the, the Swedish reenactment scene is extremely um, high quality uh, mm -hmm. in general. Uh, it's developed amazingly for uh, for the last decade or more. So as chief organizer yep. then, do, do you see it as your mission to introduce the greatest number of people to this as a hobby and to at the same time try to raise standards? Uh, yeah, um, yes to both questions but also a lot of other things. Um, right. it, we want people to have a good time when they come here. Uh, mm -hmm. That That's basically the best uh, way to get someone into uh, into the whole hobby uh, right. is to have a great time and there's something hopefully for uh, everyone 530 events should uh, <laughs> should give you something to see mm -hmm. even if you're just you know a family with uh, modern clothes and uh, kids uh, varying ages you should find something maybe come back next year mm -hmm. uh, buy yourself a tunic and and get going um, so yeah yes to both questions okay uh, <laughs> well you seem to be succeeding Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy to say so. Spoons. Cloth. <gasps> Torsion-powered bolt thrower! <laughs> Sub-devastating. <laughs> Inclusive, he said. Well, yes, you can see that it's possible to get away with dreadlocks, modern spectacles, and even at the very extreme, an assassin's uniform from a video game. That's right, an assassin's uniform. Possibly the stupidest idea for a uniform possible. Still, there were no space marines. <laughs> There are loads of ruined churches here, suggesting some terrible catastrophe like earthquake or the ravages of a brutal war, but actually the place just got a lot poorer and they didn't maintain them. 
a rather nice comb in a holder to protect the teeth, made of bone if I recall correctly. Here you see me tackle the challenge of opening it in my off hand whilst videoing with the other and keeping it in shot. Yeah, yeah, that's got it. And back. And back. Yes, spectacles were invented early enough to be called medieval. In the 13th century they start showing up in paintings, in the 14th century they became common. Triple wicked lamps there. I rather fancied this pilgrim flask, but I was skint. Now we have a chap here uh, and he's wearing patterns and he's the first person I've seen wearing them and uh, as you can see they are wooden and um, so how do you get on with these walking on cobbles? Well, it works quite uh, well. Of course, you don't want to wear them when they are uh, loose uh, mm -hmm. sand or loose uh, gravels, because that's very difficult. But right. cobbles works well, stone works well, and, uh, well, regular streets works well. What about a very steep cobbled street, though? Isn't that difficult? It's very difficult, so usually just take them off and wear them, uh, or carry them. Instead. Right. So, right, so, it's, so steep slopes on cobbles, uh, not the best. Now, one thing, of course, you don't have to cope with is an awful lot of uh, animal dung in the streets, which is perhaps um, one reason they wore them. No, it's quite more hygienic nowadays. Right. But you're the, you're the only person I've seen so far wearing these. Mm. Uh, was there not a, a fashion recently for wearing them? Yeah, it's quite, diff quite interesting because, like, I think it was five or six years ago mm -hmm. uh, here in Visby, uh, a lot of merchants were selling patterns, a lot of people were wearing patterns. There were, like, five, six uh, different... Uh, reenacted uh, types of patterns and yes. everyone was wearing patterns. A lot of my friends are wearing them and the next year, no one. Maybe people thought them too um, in, unpractical. Right, that does, yes, that does sound as though they, they tried them out. Oh, patterns, brilliant, I'll feel so authentic. And then they thought, stuff this for a lark, it's too flipping difficult on steep cobbled streets and I'm ending up kicking them off and carrying them half the time. Yeah, it's, it could be difficult. You're not as fast as uh, you used to be, but I feel it's... Right, now I'm interrupting this interview during the edit to explain this chap's sudden appearance. I was standing in a road to shoot this interview and I positioned us to give passers-by plenty of room and to give me a nice background for the picture. As I recorded, I noticed a group of people coming along, one of many, and yet alarm bells sounded in my mind with this particular group. Sure enough, one of its members, as feared, seeing what we were doing, broke away from his fellows and took this path in order to get in my shot. I continued the interview and did not move the camera, but I did turn my head to look back at him after he had passed, and he looked back at me with an expression on his face, making it clear that he considered what he had just done to have been a triumph of wit. I have never shared this opinion. Good trade-off, because uh, I get uh, my... I don't have to wear out my regular shoes. Right. So, um, how I'm much done. how much wear have you got out of these? Uh, well, notice that you don't seem to have any surface on the on the bottom of them. So these just, these just plain are quite, wood. Quite worn. Quite worn. Uh, they are. They used to be like one one and a half centimeters higher. So wow. I've so that's worn a lot. Like you've worn off them. One centimeters of wood, and it's quite uh, quite heavy wood. Because they are used, they are supposed right. to be uh, for war. So you've been walking around a lot on modern asphalt, which is yeah. very abrasive. That is a problem, mostly. <laughs> and of course, now I'm trying to interview you, they start banging drums in the background. Well, it's in Vispe. It's medieval week. I saw a lot of rawhide bottles. I, I didn't know what the evidence for these in the medieval period was, but they seemed worth investigation. <laughs> very light. We're going to do an experiment with these rawhide bottles. We're going to fill this one with water and leave it for a couple of days and uh, see and what the result is. And you will come back and see what happens. Okay. okay. And see how smelly it is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, there we okay. go. Okay, experiment now begins. Water. And now I have to just make sure my husband don't pour the water ah, out. So right. I'll put it here. This is science. <laughs> Medieval science. And then my camera suddenly died. It was working absolutely fine and then just stopped, never to work again. So I lost half a day finding a new camera, which cost me almost all the money I had. Still, God laugh, eh?
But there's a problem, isn't there, here? Because you are presumably interested in the ordinary lives of people in the medieval period, and why shouldn't you be? It's a fascinating topic. And there's, there's a limit to what I can tell you in a little video like this, so you're likely to want to find out more and take advantage of all the knowledge that's stored in the world's libraries. But you can't, because there's a global pandemic on and all the libraries are shut. And besides, what with the lockdown and everything, now that you've taken up basketry, your hands are busy and you can't turn the pages. It's just, it just doesn't work. So what can you do? Ah! What you can do is take advantage of a free offer by my sponsor, Audible. You see, Audible is a, is a massive website with a huge online library of audiobooks that you can listen to whilst you're weaving. Brilliant. OK, and a couple of uh, books that uh, caught my eye there were um, uh, The Time Traveller's Guide to Medieval England by uh, Ian Mortimer. Uh, that's one that I, I very much enjoyed. And um, uh, he, he concentrates on the 14th century, which is a good century to pick, actually, because I think when most people think of the medieval period, they're actually picturing the 14th century. And it's a time of tremendous change. I mean, people think of the 20th century as a time of tremendous change, which, of course, it was in many ways, but not in, not in, every, like, not in fashion. I mean, we still today, aren't we? We're still wearing shirt, tie, jacket, sweaters, uh, underpants, trousers, socks, all the usual stuff that we were, we were wearing a, a century ago. But people at the end of the 14th century were wearing clothes that were completely completely different from the ones at the beginning of the 14th century. Yes, it was great. You've got the plague as well. So it's a good, it's a good century to pick. Um, and anyway, so if you were to uh, click on the link in the description, or if you like typing, type in audible.com stroke Lindy Beige, or if you're one of these modern types who likes texting, you could text Lindy Beige to 500 500. Then you could take advantage um, of uh, the free one month trial uh, that they've got going. And you, you could download a free audiobook, which is yours to keep, by the way. You don't have to listen to it within the month either. It's yours to keep forever. And uh, while you're there, you could take advantage of some of the Audible Originals. Or Audible Originals. They're um, uh, produced by all sorts of quite uh, uh, starry names, but they're, 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 oh, there's quite, a, quite a, a variety. It's stuff that they have largely um, commissioned themselves. It includes lots of comedies um, and uh, current affairs, self-help stuff. Oh, you know, all the usual stuff that you might find in the library, but you can't because they're all shut. Um, and oh, another actually another book uh, uh, was Chaucer's People by Liza Pickard. Uh, again, it's everyday lives of uh, people in medieval England. She's looking at the Canterbury Tales and you looking at uh, uh, the the characters in it that actually represent a, a fair cross section of society at the time. And uh, she finds quite a lot more to say about those sort of people. And so. So she does. So there you go. So there is a way you can find out more on this topic, thanks to my sponsor. And I, I reckon that if you take advantage of this offer, then in a month's time, you might be pretty proud of your basketry. Yes, basketry. Must give it a go. This building is very narrow. This not very old looking building has a very old back wall. Whoops! Looks as though that bit of the wall fell down and got rebuilt. Some modern supports there too. So here we have some people making shoes as part of a, a sort of shoemaking course here. Yeah. And you've been given all the materials you need, is that right? Exactly. All the materials. Uh, I've been paid for it, but uh, yeah. So after how long do you expect to have a pair of shoes? Oh, actually, well, uh, I'm not so skilled, so... Yeah, a couple of more hours, I believe. Okay, and you've already taken how long to get this far? Oh, since half uh, of the course of it. Oh, this is all oh, eight hours. Okay, yeah. and so you've got oh, you've got most of a shoe here. Yeah, it's one shoe. It's, it's done. Right. Uh, I need some some straps to close it, but I can, I can do that any time. So I started on the other one. Okay, so you've you've hidden the sewing yeah, by exactly. cutting a slit yep. and hoping that that will... Yeah, to prevent it from uh, breaking as soon as you start stepping on it. Right, but the, uh, the, 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 the sole will only have to wear a little bit before it'll, it'll, it'll get to the... Uh... Yeah, but it'll take a lot longer than if you put the seam on the outside. Right, it'll just break, <laughs> yes, wear through yeah, immediately. Exactly. Yeah. So you're sewing on the, on the diagonal through the edge. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And this is a shoe from what period? 11th century. Oh, no, uh, 12th century. 12th the century. 11, the 1100s. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you have, all, you have all, a pair of authentic scissors. Yeah. And you have an awl. And you're using very stout thread. Is that waxed? Yes, it is. It's linen thread, I think. And it's waxed. Yeah. 
that's stout stuff. And then, will you wear this? I mean, for instance, here we're on on gravel. Or will you be, you know, having spent all this time making the shoe, will you then be very reluctant to walk around on gravel and modern well, actually, roads? Um, I did these at home. Right. But I've cheated and put a rubber sole on it. Yeah. No, no I, I I sympathise. I have done the same myself. You did. Okay. Yes. So maybe I will do the same to these ones, but I'm not sure yet. It's nice to have well, one set of completely authentic boots. Oh yes, it is. The uh, red outer sole yes. is fixed with this seam, so you can actually remove it and have an inner sole. So you just interchange it right. when, it, when it gets worn down. Viking period puttees. Are these hooks on the straps a reenactorism? Well, it is a simple idea and they do work, so... <laughs> Viking period brooches. They're really heavy. Leather water bottles, probably waterproofed with beeswax or the like. I have one of those somewhere. This is an interesting design of grill. Lots and lots of the same type of big pin, all joined together. A half that is its own set of skewers. Yes, there was a lot of tat on offer. There were some new agey stalls, but refreshingly few. And there were lots of inauthentic things designed for children, but that's fine. So this is what they're getting kids today to shoot at each other. Yeah, yeah, that couldn't possibly hurt, could it? But there was also inauthentic tat designed for adults. Double-bitted axes, film props. Oh, that's just shocking. Things like this that work only because they use modern fixings and materials like elastic. There were a few stalls selling fiberglass bows covered in cheap leather and selling them as medieval. If you enjoy shooting your bow like one of these, well then that's great. Archery's fun. Just please don't ever claim authenticitude. Here are some Viking, Viking swords, but there is a lot wrong with them. Wrong blade shape, wrong proportions, wrong construction methods. Handle much longer than a hand. But there was plenty of good stuff too. Two days later. And this hole was already there. Right. Because of the damage of this one. When yes, I started yes. up. Yes. You. So there is no hole because of the water. The, the mm -hmm. hole is there. It was already there when I filled it. Mm -hmm. so, so, but it's... Uh, yeah. Okay, it is soft, but, but keep, it is working. The shape. It is working as a as a bottle still. It's holding yeah. the water. Yeah. And uh, as as for the smell, I don't think it smells nothing. Mm, there's smell. a bit of smell there. A little bit. You um, want to try to drink it? Uh, <laughs> uh, it was clean water when it went in, right? Yeah. Mm. I shall do everything, this for science. Everything for science. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> um, Do you want to have yeah. a glass of clean water now? <laughs> yeah, possibly, yeah. yeah? Okay, I give you. Yeah, that tastes of rawhide. <laughs> oh! Brilliant. Very definitely of rawhide. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's why you should mm. have wine in it. Yes, I feel or, such a fool. Yes. Yes. Lots of wine. Yes, lots. Or, yeah, particularly lots. Rum. Lots is my favourite. Yes. Yeah. I, li I like that sort rum. of wine. Rum. rum. Yeah. It's also rum like. Is better. It's stronger. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, every germ. It kills everything. Yeah. Um, okay. Hang on. I think I. There's a massive queue here. What, what, what's this massive queue for? For the medieval flea market. Oh, it must be terrific. No. Shitty things at <laughs> sky high prices. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, and how long do you, do you expect to have to wait in line? Probably almost an hour. Wow. I'll show they haven't opened yet. But, but do, do reassure me, they are really shitty things at sky high prices, right? Probably. Mm. The first okay. ten people are going to get the good things and then... <laughs> We're going to get the bones. Uh, yes. But this will just happen tomorrow again. Why don't you come back tomorrow? No. Once a year. Okay. Once a year. Ah, oh, okay, and uh, well, have have fun queuing, because I, I I feel that's that's going to be the highlight. <laughs> Authentic fans. Yikes! That is uh, authentically ugly. That lady is using an inauthentic phone.
you put the candle in there. Yeah, and light it, and then just put it in, and a little bit mm -hmm. uh, twist, and then it's stuck. Right. Yeah. Now, this idea of using rawhide as the as the shield yeah. or uh, blood, I mean, it, clearly it, it works. Yeah. But do you know of any actual evidence that it was used in the period? Uh, in our museum here in Bisbee, mm -hmm. uh, they have dated to uh, 1700 oh. right. century. So it's quite uh, three, four hundred years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they you specifically mean rawhide, because rawhide doesn't survive, of course. No, they had some small, 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 small pieces that they analyzed. Right. So they, they um, so they um, could uh, uh, say that it was the bladder of the pig. So it's big, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So it's an old thing. Yes, you, you, one thing about the, the bladders is that you get these sort of veins or whatever they are left yeah. in them, which uh, gives everyone its own fingerprint. Yeah, it does. Sometimes it's much, like that one, mm -hmm. and sometimes nearly nothing. You just can see it. Right. Small, small, small. So they make, I don't know, presumably back in the day they would charge extra for the pure, yeah. pure ones, but today people might yeah. think, oh, I want a veiny yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, but some, some people think it's disgusting. Oh. And it's very red. They don't like it. Right, because I've heard I've heard it accused, I've heard it said that though we know lanterns like this existed, that the idea of using rawhide in, in this case pig's bladder, uh, it might be a reenactorism. If you know what I mean, like a modern thing, but uh, yeah. you're you're satisfied that uh, at least in the 1700s, yeah. some people used yeah. ladders. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Ah, tablet weaving, the proper way to do fancy edging for your tunics. Or you could buy some modern ribbon for decorating Indian saris, that can also work. Oh, at last! I finally found a pattern for a traditional Mongolian waistcoat. Oh, it's the plastron fronted type. I'll keep looking. What are these lanterns made with? Ah, fish skin. <laughs> so, one of the problems that the people have to contend with here is dust being kicked up. And uh, the, I, let, me, let me show you. Uh, what the, uh, ooh. Uh, ooh. Uh. And how does one clean a basket that's been on the stall in a dusty market all day? With compressed air, of course, from an inauthentic compressor. I'm here with a chap with a very uh, splendid hood which is buttons down the front, and a very, very long uh, pipe-like thing at the back, which has various names, including in Swedish... Uh, Struthetta, or Strut, for this part. Right. And uh, the thing with these is they can be worn in many different ways. So if you pull the hood up and show us the, how it looks normally... Okay, so there we go. But you could decide instead to do it some other way. So it could look like... And in one swift movement, <laughs> he turns it round, puts his head in through the face hole, and then uses the long pipe-like bit at the back to tie it into a new position. And ta-da! And now he's wearing it like that. And sometimes we see portraits, uh, uh, paintings of people wearing hats like this, and it takes a bit of figuring out that it's actually the same sort of hat that's just worn differently. Now, you were telling me something about the possible grammar of this. Well, I, I was wondering if they had different grammar about it. So maybe if I wear it like this, it mm -hmm. means I'm single and available. Or if I wear it to, to the one side, it means right. I'm taken, but I'm open to suggestions. Okay. Or, or maybe if, it, if it's this way, then I'm completely off limits. Sorry. Oh, right. <laughs> I have no idea if that's true, but it would be very interesting if it actually was. Yeah, I, I, I think it's very likely there was some sort of grammar to it. And you've just shown us two ways of um, wearing it, but in fact those aren't the only two, and there are several others. Uh, there are, but I'm not really good at doing them, unfortunately. All right. So. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. No worries. 
It seems that we cannot stop people dressing as pirates. I encountered this lot. What noise does a Swedish pirate make? Arr! <laughs> I'm here now with a chap who's taken uh, the costume to new heights. Not only has he got everything in, in, the, in the authentic materials and so forth, but you've really taken the haircut seriously. Yes. So uh, do you wear this haircut all year round or is it just for the festival? No. Uh, usually I'm, I'm shaving all over. Uh, I actually, uh, me and, and some friends, we uh, decided to uh, uh, spare our hair for right. a couple of months uh -huh. and then shave this, uh, I don't know what the English word for tonsure. it. Tonsure. Yeah, tonsure. Tonsure, yeah, yeah the yeah. same. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a, a sort of a ritual right. Right, last Friday. Uh -huh. We shaved our hair and uh, yeah, middle week. <laughs> so, so you say you're normally completely shaven? Is that what yeah, you said? Yeah. All right. So it's not that you've shaven your head so much as grown the rest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. But you, but you haven't, you haven't, you haven't squeezed that beard out, have you? In, yeah, in, in yeah, a short while. The, the beard that's uh, standard. Okay. Because yes. I would say that would be a super. Supreme effort of willpower. To <laughs> Thank you. From here like that so quickly. Yeah, but I thought I I, uh, I have been here a lot of times and uh, I've seen a lot of monks. Mm -hmm. um, but they're usually older men with right. uh, the tonsure already fixed. If yeah. you know what I mean. Uh, yes. Yeah. They don't have to uh, shave. I've it. never seen uh, someone in my own, my own age right. doing it. So. A hundred percent. Fair play to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Visby, when it isn't being noisy, can be a very nice place for a stroll. This is a water tower. The festival has quite a bit of nightlife. The bars fill up and carry the theme through. There is much beer drinking. Don't people in modern clothes look rubbish? There are some big free shows for all. Every year they put on a fire show after dark one night and I was led to believe this was a major highlight not to be missed. Some people grabbed the best spots to watch from in the morning and waited all day for it. I just turned up on time, but they started about two hours late and while waiting I got colder than I have ever been as an adult. Very luckily for me I happened to be near someone who had a spare cloak and who took pity on me. Thank you, thank you to that kind individual because without that cloak I would have had to leave. Even with it it was a test of endurance. They had a target specially prepared to burst into flames. I forget how many volleys of arrows it took to set it alight. Apparently, one year it took 17. Let's hear it for modern petrochemicals! I got tickets for this theatrical show and it was great. Good music, enthusiastic cast, bold direction. And no, I didn't 
video at all. In the main, I used my eyes and saw it at the time. For a lot of people, I suspect that a big part of what they enjoy about the festival is sharing a tent with friends and sitting around a real fire and just whiling the nights away. <laughs> <laughs>